right. Hi, everyone. If you have come, just say hi to us. Is there any party? You can leave some message on the chat box. Right, let me start. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our live session. This is the second live of our platform. On um, the topic today, it's very very interesting because it happened in bangkok and i live in bangkok this story just excited me so much and the topic today is discovering trans female identity to traveling in bangkok i mean wow this topic is fire <laughs> i love the topic so much i'm kind of curious like how this person fight her identity to traveling in, in Bangkok. That's very interesting. Okay, first off, let me introduce myself. My name is Kasika Tebitat, or you can call me Coco. I'm a beauty YouTuber for a few years now, and I am actually have been working with Sephora Thailand for almost five years. So I'm kind of expertise in beauty industry. And to, to you know, I think Sephora Thailand is one of the LGBTQ plus friendly workplace. If, if you are interested, you can apply. Uh, it, it's so comfortable to, to work here, no discrimination. We support each other. Great. <clears throat> Does anyone here can comment down on the chat box? All right. Let uh, let me introduce about our platform first before we start any session. Our platform, LGBTQ Plus Tourist Asia, is a platform where um, LGBTQ Plus communities and tourists, hospitality businesses meet each other. And we advocate the LGBTQ Plus inclusiveness and friendliness in traveling in services and you look like you you don't feel like discrimination or mistreating you'd be happy to to travel in in, in asia <clears throat> all right and our session today will be sharing session for 30 minutes and then 15 minutes for q a and we're going to sum up a little bit about our topic before we start, help us share this session to your friends, to your sister, brother, or anyone that you think that might be beneficial for them who may be unsure about their self and fighting their true self. Please help us share. And don't forget to like the page, LGBTQ Plus Tourism Asia. Uh, we also have a Instagram. We also have a LinkedIn. Please follow us. All right. I think it's time to invite our speaker. She is the broadcaster, variety broadcaster, and she lives in Singapore. And I'm calm. I think it's time. Let, let's invite her. Please welcome Kelsey to our live session. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello, Kelsey. Yes. 
Hello. How are you doing today, Coco? I hope you're doing well. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great too. Yeah. I'm so Hello excited everyone. to to hear about your story. Ah, thank you. <laughs> but before before we start, mm -hmm. can can you share a little bit about yourself? Can you introduce yourself? Yeah. So I'm Kelsey, and I'm from Singapore. And I identify as female, so please use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm currently working in the government sector, so surprise. Yes. Wow. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's it's been it's been a difficult difficult time in Singapore for trans people, and I am proud, really proud to um, be here and like talking with you guys as well. Yeah, so um, brief background about like me. Um, I did my education in um, I did my education in education, so education psychology, and I became a teacher. And finally, now I'm working in the government. Yes. So yeah. wow, <laughs> like I think we ha we have something like similar, like for trans people who work in government. It's not easy at all, and you can make it happen. Like, wow, that's interesting. Yeah. So, thank yeah. you for sharing about you. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, according to our topic, discovering trans feminine identity through traveling in Bangkok, it seems like you are interesting in Bangkok and you like Bangkok so much. Do you? <laughs> I love Bangkok. So oh. um, Bangkok is but, a beautiful place. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. But, I've been to Bangkok. Why? Like, why why Bangkok? Why Bangkok? Okay, yes. I mean it's it's very close to Singapore. Bangkok is so friendly. Bangkok is a place where yeah, it's I mean, since it's so LGBTQ friendly, yeah, it's really a natural place to go. And the food is amazing. The sites are amazing. The people are so friendly. Oh. I found so many friends in Bangkok. Yeah, it's really amazing to go to Bangkok. Yeah. I'm so happy you like Thailand. You like Bangkok. <laughs> I hope I you do. have a great experience here. Yes, I did. Definitely. Unfortunately, with COVID, it's quite sad, you know, that, you know, like all the plans to travel, they've all been like, shelf yeah that's really really sad but definitely when like traveling reopens i'm definitely going to bangkok again that's cool yeah and what did what did you like what do you like to do when you come to thailand wow it's a lot of eating it's a lot of shopping seeing the sights yeah so um that's one of the fir first few photos that i've taken like on the like trip like on the plane to bangkok so beautiful you can see the river and you know like it's like golden sun rays just shining um, down yeah great. so like, um wow that was me that was me <laughs> you Before. you were on the photo bike <laughs> yeah this is one of this is like whenever i go to thailand it's like so interesting because in Singapore, there is no motorbike taxi. <laughs> and I still remember the first time I took it, I was so scared. Yeah, I, I'm going the person to ask about didn't your experience. Give, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, the person didn't even give me a helmet to wear. I was just hanging on for dear life. <laughs> yeah, that was really, really scary then. Because they are yeah. very fast and they can go through any small alley. <laughs> yeah, it's like the fastest way to travel. Yeah. So like this was, um, I've been to Thailand uh, like maybe six, seven times over the past like wow. five years. Yeah, and I really, really love, I really, really love Bangkok. And this is one, Um, this was at Khao San Road. Khao San, yeah, I, I noticed yeah, that. Very interesting. Thing. Yeah. So you, you went there for yes. party? Oh, it's just yeah, just just partying, drinking. 
Um, if I'm not wrong, the bar I like to go to is uh, Brick. There's brick this bar. Brick, yes, it's very yes. famous for teenagers yes. and adults. So that's, that's where I always go to at Carlson Road. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. So taking the boat down the river. Chao Praya, isn't it? One more, no. yes. One more down the river as well. It's such a beautiful place. Yeah. And the mm -hmm. next photo from this is my favorite hotel. I always make it a point to come here. Those of you who can guess where this hotel is. I don't know if you know this place. This is where um, the Such hangover. A nice wheel, though. Yeah, this is this is the Le Bois. Whoa! Hotel. Yes, I it always went there. love it. This is an amazing place. Yeah, this is Chatucha. You can tell this is the clock tower. Shopping. At DJ Market. <laughs> yes. Always weekend shopping. It's amazing in Bangkok. So if you guys have never been to Bangkok or you're like from over, you're not in Asia, this is a place to come. You should really, really come down to Bangkok. Yeah. Uh, stop by Singapore, then go to Bangkok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True, true. Um, some of the night markets that you have, people selling all sorts of food, um, fruits, cooked food. My favorite in the next slide, I think, is it the next Yes, Mamuang. <laughs> ah, Mamuang. Yes, mango. I love mango. Um, my favorite, my favorite fruit of all times. Have uh, you tried I really love mango with sticky rice? Yes, Kao Niao Mamuang. Oh, yes. yeah, that's one of my favorites. Dessert so as well. Green curry. I love all that the, too. All the tasty food in Thailand. Wow. Patai, you must always eat this one, the one, the Patai Pratuki. Yes. Oh, you went there. Always. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. Kao Nia Ma Wang. Kao Nia Ma Wang, yes. <laughs> yeah. And then the next one should be the extremely <laughs> posh version of it with the ice oh cream. Oh my as God. Well. That looks so yes. good. So yeah, that's that's some of the pictures of my journey, like all the pictures from Thailand. Yeah. All right. So <clears throat> anyway, can you can you tell the story like how did you find your identity of the trans like through traveling in Bangkok? Like you've been to many places, night yes. time, night, like Eating, traveling, shopping. Mm -hmm. So, um, for me, I grew up. You know, I grew up when I was young. I always had like dreams, wishes to, like, the next day I could wake up as a lady in a different body. And because, uh, because I grew up as a Christian and in a very oh. conservative society. Yeah, like it's always like, okay, you're not supposed to feel this way. This is wrong. So you always hide it and you push it aside. So throughout my whole life, I've been trying to be as masculine as I could. But mm -hmm. it was never, it's never the case. Yeah. As in like the true identity inside is like you can't, you can't lie to yourself. And so through all my travels to Bangkok, like, you know, talking to the people, finding like some of the few trans people that I've met and I feel that trans people are actually like th they have nothing to lose and they are like the friendliest people in Thailand yeah. oh you look great <laughs> so this is this is me this is me last year so oh, um, what year. happened was sorry in 2019 <clears throat> so um 2019 I actually sat myself down and I and I and I asked myself, hey, is this really the kind of life that you want to live? You know, like always hiding, always living for other people, how other people think about you, how mm -hmm. they perceive you, you know, or do you want to be true to yourself? So 2019 was really the year where I started thinking about stuff. And when I finally went to Bangkok, that was the time where I said, you know what, I am going to try living my life 
because you know they always say like you know you should try socially transitioning see how it is like living as a lady first before you do anything like hormones surgery yeah, yeah. and so yeah. i took i took that and i just had this whole trip just in a feminine kind of like self yeah so this is me trying to <laughs> yeah this is me trying to dress up a little you know putting on makeup practicing yeah so i've seen you wear makeup have you ever been to sephora in thailand yes and i was just gonna say that like the very first place i bought like the proper makeup and did my eyebrows was at sephora oh. So that was in Siam, Siam Central. Siam Central. Oh, you went is it, there. Was it Siam Central, the black building beside Paragon? Yes, Central. Yeah, yes. Yes. See, That's after right. after two years, after one year, when you don't go back, you just forget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's and so, all right. And so it it was it was such a nice experience having someone like do your brows and then after you look at it you're like oh this looks amazing yes like this is transformation like, like one brow change yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah and having someone teach me how to you know like do my makeup yes if you if you guys know this is Bella yeah, our sister our sister yeah <laughs> she's one of the people who brought me around so accepting so kind yeah and like it was amazing walking around with her being just myself yeah it felt amazing mm. more photos wow. <laughs> this is me wearing a, a wig a wig yes i bought a wig in thailand as well just to try I was like, hey, I think I really like long hair, but like now I think I, I'm happy with like shoulder length hair. So my dream hair is like a bob with some like side swept bangs. Ah. Yeah. So that, that's what I'm aiming for. I hope. I think the <laughs> I short one is so look sexy and this looks this great. One. <laughs> yeah, recently I just pierced my ears as well. So I just did like three piercings. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah. A double lace. <laughs> yeah, and then you have lace, like a lacy top. It was just me just experimenting with, this was before hormones, okay? Everything uh -huh. was before hormones. I went to a small little gathering and they were so welcoming. And they were like, you know, dress however you want to dress. And I was you like, look okay, so happy. Let's... Yeah, this was a pool party. And so like, wow. like in the house, like while everyone else was at the pool. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to wear something and like, just have fun. Yeah. I was like, and I really did have fun. And I'm so glad that my friend took that photo. And this is me on um one last picture before coming back to Singapore. Mm. So yeah, the last picture in Bangkok in a very very long time i really want to go back in the same shirt i will wear the same shirt and take the same photo <laughs> yeah. this but this time if you, you ever come i'm gonna transformation you make over okay, you okay you you help me All do right. my makeup okay sure, sure. I will. definitely I will. So. <laughs> great yeah. and yeah. how when 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 did you feel that you need that you can't hold it anymore and you need to come out like who you uh, are yeah so it was it was it was last year where it just it kept was... like the thoughts just kept building like you know i really really want to be a girl I like to show myself who i really am inside and i don't want to hide myself anymore and so slowly it started you know um this is why like conversion therapy does not work yeah so like people who have gone through conser uh, conversion therapy is very very damaging and i've gone through it my life i've tried to reject it and everything and all the way through the whole of 2020 thankfully like i could wear masks and all that sort of stuff uh, whenever I work, I was still supposed to present male. Yeah, so it was mm. so 
it was it is depressing when you have to present because someone else decides you have to not because you want to and it came to a point where in 20 like this the start of this year in january where i looked at myself in the mirror and i get panic attacks in the morning just mm. wearing clothes to go to work and that was when i told myself yeah you know what i th 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 that's enough i am really just going to go all out and i'm going to be who i want to be yeah and you are so brave <laughs> Thank you. It, it's been a very difficult process, but I'm so grateful, you know, that I have friends, uh, dance friends, some colleagues who really understand and they're supportive, even in the government. Yeah, like a conservative society like Singapore. Yeah. So I'm really grateful for those people. Yeah. And um, like talking, about, talking about work, uh, recently, I'm so grateful that uh, the Singapore government has also been willing. So at first, I was, I'm a teacher. So because of Singapore society, you know, I can't come out to the kids because the parents, some of the parents might be worried and stuff like that. And so what I did was, um, I, for me, I had to ask for a transfer. And mm -hmm. I'm so grateful that they were willing to transfer me. So now I teach teachers. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm assisting in the training and the professional development of teachers. So they allow me to dress like more femininely. They're addressing me. They're addressing me by my name, like Kelsey, oh, instead of my dead name. So I'm nice. really, really grateful. And that is something that I never expected could happen. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and this is me with more makeup. Like now I'm on now that I'm on hormones and That's yeah. True. So yeah, and this is me trying to be sexy. <laughs> yeah. Oh even sexier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and you really see that like the confidence, the happiness, it's so different right now as compared to how I was like six months ago. Definitely different. And yeah, this was when I finally found like perfectly fitting bras from La Senza. Yes, it Hashtag looks fits on your body. It looks <laughs> yeah, great. It's beautiful. Yeah. This is me. Um, just plain, no makeup, plain Jane. And just um this was last week. Yeah, I took this photo last week. Hit coming home so you've been in like hormone treatment for maybe years a bit no it's not been years it's just been a, a um it's been a few a few months yeah oh, few and, months. and the changes are really really so stark yeah <laughs> wow that's interesting. More photos. You know, we have a few more photos, I guess. Oh, <laughs> yeah, this is, this is me. you are on heels. <laughs> yes, this was one of my favorite. This is one of my favorite photos. I went out on a date uh, with some guy. And he's an amazing guy. He's like so accepting, which is very, very surprising. Unfortunately, family is still an issue. So, Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So, oh well. Wow. Thanks to you, it can't be helped, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. But I I love that you wearing high heels. I love to be on heel as well, and it's mm -hmm. not easy. It's a lot of practice. A lot of practice. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you need to balance when you walk, like for the mm -hmm. first time. Yeah. But yeah, I but. Yeah. But when I was was a teenager, I, I I always wear heels to dance and perform at school. <laughs> oh, nice! Quite amazing. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Actually, I I, I I heard from my friend that being trans in Singapore is not mm -hmm. easy. Can you tell me like how different of being trans in in Singapore in in Thailand in Thailand? 
Okay, in, in Singapore, um, right now, the focus a lot is because of the issue um, from... There was this trans girl that... And this has been happening quite a lot. Uh, unfortunately, Singapore is a very conservative society. So uh, we have to toe the line a lot in terms of like being safe and also being accepted by people. Um, it's very interesting, the situation that we're in, because um, the, the discrimination against LGBT people is only by a very small minority of people in Singapore. But because they speak the loudest, it feels as if everyone is against LGBT. Mm. Unfortunately, that's not really not the case. Even, I would dare say, even in the government, there are people who support LGBT rights. However, because there is a balance that we must strike, where, you know, like, LGBT and conservative, like, you know, there must be that balance. So, unfortunately, there are a few things that we cannot publicly uh, acknowledge. And that is sometimes very damaging to for people, especially trans youths who are in the education system. Um, the education system, I think the Singapore education system is good. There are a lot of changes that are coming. And I wish that some things would be easier to change Unfortunately, there are some things that cannot change because of this very, very thin balance that we need to that we need to hold. Yeah, before society kind of gets very, um, very antagonistic and, um, in some sense, um, not hating on any culture or any country, but to to have that sense of stability and mm -hmm. that um, perfect image that Singapore has, Singapore cannot be as open, cannot show itself as open as other countries. So for example, like the US, like if, if Singapore um, adopted some of the things that the US adopted, yes, mm -hmm. our life might improve, but we might also be very unstable as well. Some people might find it good. Some people like think like it's too crazy. I think it. I think it's a slow process that Singapore has to go through before we finally strike a new balance. Like say, yes, yeah. it takes so, some time, but I'm mm -hmm. surely. So so with all that said, yeah. With all that said, now when it comes to living as a trans person in Singapore, I think the best way to fight for our rights is to live out, to live out your life. Um, sometimes it's really difficult because when you realize that you're trans and you have very, very strong gender dysphoria, I'm very thankful that my gender dysphoria was not deliberating. Like it didn't, it didn't like damage me. Um, so I was still able to hide in the shadows, like all the way till now, where I finally find all these depressing thoughts and like I have to do something. My heart really goes out to the young people under 16 who cannot find a way out. I really wish that the education system would take care of this these few people. Yeah, but um, looking at the bigger picture, there is a lot of problem when it comes to like, oh, you know what? Now, okay, because you're having gender dysphoria, like because... Um, you know, you have a letter from the government. I mean, mm -hmm. you have a letter from the doctor and then we'll allow you to wear clothes. Unfortunately, um, again, it's that balance that must be struck. So it's very difficult to find that balance in terms, in terms of Singapore's context. Yeah. I understand. So um, other, otherwise, if you're an adult, and my best advice is to show people that, hey, we are normal people as well. Like, you know, uh, we are not weird people. Um, oh. I'm someone who, yeah, I'm someone who can, who can uh, carry a proper conversation, can do my job. It's just, it's just who I am inside. You know, there's a difference between my personal life and my professional life. So oh. 
it doesn't mean I can't do my job. It doesn't mean that I am any lesser than someone else. Yeah, I just have I just have a different condition and a different battle that I have to fight. So and yeah. the and the diversity is really exist. So so people yeah, need to exactly. accept that. Not not yeah. just and, straight and or <laughs> Correct, exactly. If you accept us, you actually find that, like Coco, what you just said, like diversity, you find that there, there is more, there is more, there's more to life than just how you perceive like your heteronormative way of living. I mean, it might be easier in that sense to be heteronormative, but we are the color in your life. You know, we're not here to cause you trouble. We're not here to shake your boat, but if you if you realize that um, why we need to shake the boat is because you haven't been thinking of us. You know, true, we are humans true. too. And we also want a say in in living life. You know, yeah. So um, I really, really prefer yeah, I really, really prefer like us living our life, yeah, living our lives uh, as, as trans people. And honestly speaking, for me, I felt that, I feel I feel that in the future, if I really get to travel again, I will definitely go back to Bangkok and experience life as, as a lady traveling in Bangkok. I think that would be so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes, I'm so yes. sorry. This sound. This sounded like a political. It's not a political rant. <laughs> it's about <laughs> traveling. Everyone is about traveling. Yes. So yeah. Um, traveling can definitely help you, like, find yourself. Uh, there are a lot of people who travel and then realize that hey, there are so many other interests that, uh, I wanna I wanna try. And then when they come back, it's a it's a different perspective in life. I think if you if you're in your bubble for too long, sometimes uh you don't see other people's perspectives. And when you mm. travel, you know, it's really, really where you find yourself. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh like yeah, 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 yeah. If you are like you still know. confused, try to travel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely, yes. Try traveling. Because you can to explore, off. try new things. Maybe mm -hmm. there's something that you like. This is right for you. Just, just don't do anything illegal. I mean, when yeah. you're traveling, <laughs> I feel that yeah. When you're traveling, I feel that like you're you're more free. You're there to enjoy. Put all your stress behind you. Enjoy your life. And yeah, I mean, as a tourist, that's that's the whole point, right? You're there to enjoy. So yes, enjoy your life. Yes. Most important thing is you need to like have a self respect and you don't want to be any trouble for anyone. We are yeah. just normal yeah. people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, can can you like let conclude? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your sharing story that was very beautiful. Do you have anything mm -hmm. to say to someone who are still confusing? uncomfortable and not sure what they are anything to inspire them for the people who are in very very um, dangerous situations my advice is to be safe first um, seek help from people whom you can trust so um, go find a psychiatrist go find a counselor um, find people who will be able to talk things out with you. Find Your a support comfort. system. Yes. So find a support system that is able to help you take your mind off things. Um, there, there, we all have our different trials in life. Um, I would say I'm quite fortunate in some sense uh, where I had, I had things somehow I had things line up perfectly for me. Circumstances really lined up for me. And um, I am thankful that uh, for these opportunities. But yeah, there's some people, there's some people who don't get the opportunity. Please find, make sure that you are safe first, then look for such opportunities. Sometimes you really have to open your 
You have to be very open-minded about things. Even if it means leaving the country, sometimes you have to do it. So uh, the best thing you can do is to invest in yourself. Make sure that you invest in your education. Make sure you invest in your health. And then when you are ready to leave, you will be a very valuable person to wherever you go. And there are many, many countries that are more accepting. Um, I have not explored all my options as well. Um, the, the leaving, leaving Singapore is still on the cards. Yes, maybe like San Francisco might be a good place for me. I don't know. Yeah. So it, if I have any advice, yes, it's to be safe. Be safe, first. yes. And then to always inform yourself of everything. Yeah, make sure that you have thought through everything first. Yeah, if you're very certain about something because, um, yeah, if you're, let's say for, for like being trans, if you're questioning, always find research, always talk to other people, talk to other trans people, ask them about their experiences. You know, find a That's community true. where like, you can Sometimes when we share yeah. our story, like you can realize something. Mm -hmm, yes. Better than and talking I, to yourself or Lee, like correct. So, yes, that's true. Yeah. And I think in that sense, for me, the best thing that the best thing that happened for me is talking to some of the trans people in Thailand. I agree. Finding I agree. about finding out about their life, how it was for them, how it was transitioning for them, and seeing what is possible. So again, traveling, traveling is quite good, especially when you when you leave uh let's say Let's say if there isn't a community that you can really reach out to immediately in Singapore, but there are many communities, just you just need to find them. And when you find friends, like let's say in other places of the world, you have very, very different perspectives. And I'm very glad that I have <clears throat> I have friends in Thailand, I have friends in Taiwan, I have friends like all over Asia, and yeah. some friends even in the US. And I can ask them how things are like. Um, overseas is there a chance that i can move you know yeah so so think about leave your options open don't think like this is this is the worst there is no hope for me there is no future there is always a future for you right mm -hmm. so don't worry about it okay thank you right thank you so much for sharing your Ooh. story like it's so vulnerable and i've learned a lot of things from your story like very oh, inspiration thank you <laughs> oh Anyone right now is a q a session yeah. or in our live you can leave your comments and questions so i can pick some question and ask kelsey Any questions? While we waiting for a question, I can share my story when I come out. <laughs> oh, sure, you should. You should definitely share your story. Yeah, while we waiting. Um, <laughs> personally, I I didn't expect to come out actually, but. Uh, it's funny story because I I fell in love with a handsome guy when I was mm -hmm. in grade grade seven maybe and I wrote in a notebook about his name and tell him like how much I love him. <laughs> One day my mom she found this book oh. <laughs> and she asked who is this guy and i um <laughs> and i didn't i didn't like i didn't tell them like who i am but they already know because this book explored my me that explored me so in some way you just came out from <laughs> accidentally <laughs> yeah interesting but 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 when when I was a child, I I always like singing, dancing, and I, yeah. So 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 my 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 hero is Beyonce. I think 
lots of LGBTQ love Beyonce, and oh, I, no. I do. <laughs> we have a question. Yes. So I, I, I started to 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 find myself because of Beyonce actually, because I listened to her music, her music video, her concert, and I just want to have like big hair. <laughs> a Ooh. big hair like her, a um, beautiful makeup, sexy dress, and such a high heels and dance on the heels. Mm. Cool. And so I, I, I perform, perform Beyonce song every year since like mm -hmm. six. <laughs> <laughs> I like performing too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. We have a question from Bella. Bella. <laughs> Hi. Hi. What's my next plan for living as a trans person later on? Wow, I have no idea what's my plan, honestly speaking. Um, it's a very interesting question, but... I guess it's really where like life takes me. I have found many, many paths like right now. And um, for me, the possibility is um, continuing with education, which is something that I really, really enjoy doing. Uh, the, other, the other thing that I was thinking about doing is uh, being a counsellor, like counsellor for relationships, counsellor for... Um, at risk use, all sorts of things. Like maybe in the next few years, go get my psychology degree, get a degree in psychology and help. Yeah. So um, otherwise, um, the other thing would be like performing or, you know, like continuing my life as a Twitch streamer, going full time. I don't know how that will work out. So that's these are many, many options that I can explore. And yeah, well, um, you are now, very yeah. enthusiastic. <laughs> yeah. And especially, and especially being a counselor really helps because I have lived a good half of my life as a guy. I know, and I know how guys think. Mm. And now, living as my true self as a lady, it's special because now I can actually connect with both sides. I actually know how people on both sides think. So I think it really helps, especially with relationship building and like, yeah, being a relationship counselor, maybe that helps a lot. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Nice. Anyone else with questions? Don't Any questions? <laughs> And let's get back to your um, how how many times have you been in Bangkok? Oh, seven. Seven. Seven, seven huh? Wow. First of all, thanks for the sharing. Oh, thanks, Jia Hui. You would like to know what we do when we feel that things get tough. Ah. Uh, why I can't yeah, see so... any comments. Oh. Um yeah, the, the questions are questions are right there. Yeah, so um what, okay. what, do, what do we do? So I'm guessing you're asking in a trans kind of lens, like where the the things that you know we face yeah um for me it's i go to my friends um when it's when i feel when i feel very stressed and all i go to friends i go to people that really matter to me and yeah sometimes i feel like i'm a burden yeah i i guess that's inevitable as well but yeah, I, I do really, really, um, I like to talk, talk things out. Um, some people, they like to process things in their head. But for me, I like to talk about stuff. I'm more extroverted that way. I get my energy from like outside connections. Yeah, and then 
uh, when things get tough, that's when I, after talking to people and finding out my options, then I go back and think think about things before I finally like uh, think about like, you know, okay, what's the next step and what, what should I do? Yeah, so a lot of a lot of my a lot of the, along the way through my journey, um, I had a lot of people who I really talked to, and uh, especially the person who was the most precious to me, yeah, uh, my partner. Yeah, she was someone who was so amazing. She really, really took care of my emotions, and I'm really, really grateful to her for that. Yeah, and yeah. So that's how I process I process things. Mm. Also asking Coco this question. Well, I guess so. Coco, you can you can also weigh in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cut. Actually, I'm kind of similar to you because I will I will start with my family, like. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm, I'm kind of fortunate that I have a family that support me. Don't mm -hmm. judge me, especially my sister, yeah. my mother. And kind of weird that also my dad, he actually opened. Like, I, I was afraid. Wow. Actually, okay. I, I was afraid that he won't accept this. But, whoa, he did. <laughs> so, so, so if I have yeah. anything, I just ask them right away. And... Mm -hmm. Sometimes I know this is kind of spiritual, but I I went I went for fortune, fortune telling <laughs> fortune teller. <laughs> how do you how do you then after you have gotten like like viewpoints from like your family, what do you do next? After family, maybe my best friend because I only have like one best friend who I trust and can share anything and very like that she 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 very very carefully listen to my problems and mm -hmm. give me some advice like logically <laughs> and then after that you work on all these comments like so is it very similar like a similar process is what I do as well yeah, kind of similar to you, actually. Ah, cool, mm. I see. That's interesting. Yeah. But um, most importantly, I, I'm, I'm the person who not giving up easily. Like I always like let let's do it again. Let's find a new way. I think that's how mm -hmm. I can get through the hardest time or the tough situation because I never give up. Mm -hmm. So like really persevering through like all this difficulty. Hi Stella. <laughs> Hi everyone. All right. Thank you so much, Kelsey, for it's been like amazing time chatting with you, sure. listening you. to your story. <laughs> this is a great people. session. The 13 yeah. people of you watching us. Thank you so much for being so yeah. kind to be here. Yeah. I hope thank my you. sharing thank you so much. would inspire someone i really hope it does <laughs> yeah i hope kelsey's story inspire you guys and thank you for every audience who has come to our live session um before before we go don't forget to like this platform lgbtq plus tourism asia page in LinkedIn, Instagram, and stay tuned for upcoming activities. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Also, Good go job. like Coco's. Go like Coco's Instagram page. Oh, yes, <laughs> I have a beauty makeup page. Coco, wow, you can find me. <laughs> Great. All right. Good thank night, you, everyone. Charlie. Thank you, Stella. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. We'll see Good you night. all. Bye.